and I want to see that tree real close, as close as possible, okay? Six years ago, I came here to do a supply chain analysis to determine where the frankincense comes from and how it gets to market. Very nice. And Jeanette DiCarlo, a scientific researcher from the United States, has traveled the world to learn see? about the life yeah, how of beautiful. trees. So look how far that goes. De Carlo is on the trail of one of the most sought after trees in the world. She relies on cutting edge technology to help survey the difficult terrain where frankincense can flourish. We're using the drone to be able to verify very quickly and more efficiently where the Carteri trees are. Boswellia Carteri and Feriana don't just grow everywhere in the world. Her goal on this trip determine the sustainability of the frankincense trade here in Northwest Somalia. This valuable information will help international cosmetic companies decide on which traders to work with and where to buy their resin. In the 21st century luxury economy, more business plans rely on environmental responsibility as much as they do on efficiency. Frankincense has a long history as a trading commodity. The ancient Egyptians prized it highly, and it can be found as a treasured gift in many religious stories. The traditional trading route was for the, the resins to leave here and go through Yemen into Saudi Arabia. Now with the war in Yemen and the problems in Yemen, that trade route has been closed off. What's increased simultaneously is the demand in the West for carteri. I think generally, whether it's organic or whether it's just natural cosmetics, I think customers are a lot more aware of what they are putting on themselves. Um, as far as we're concerned, as far as growth is concerned, we are uh, looking at some pretty impressive growth figures um, and a lot of increasing use of natural uh, raw materials as well. These are his trees. So, so there's a lot Frankincense of trees here exist in three groups. Feriana, Carteri, and Sacra. All are fragile, rare, and need special conditions to exist. Even with drones, to give her a bird's eye view, De Carlo and her team must hike long distances to gain a complete picture of the situation on the ground. He knows better than anybody, so we're following him. Okay. <laughs> and with temperatures climbing over 35 degrees Celsius, tempers can easily rise. Okay. Give me five minutes. Take the drone out. Don't listen to anyone else right now. How can you push it away? Don't listen to anyone else right now. Listen to me. Let's get the drone out. And let's get a look up there, okay? So it's good if you get a nice aerial shot, but if you can kind of come down in there a little bit for me. Uh, and I'm not really liking what I'm seeing. And that actually looks like it just was recently degraded, doesn't it? Mm. You see that? This, this vein right yes, here. This, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the carteries are gone then. I mean, the adults are gone. Where's our government technical team? Yeah, I, I want all of us confirm this at the same time. I'm at Cali, the Cali. No, no. Wait, wait. Everybody calm down for a sec. We're looking at degraded pockets of carteri trees. We are. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're doing science. Let me make clear. Yes. The area used I mean used used to be to grow scarcity. I mean basuela carteri. These are degraded, these have been over harvested, these these are done. Nobody knows. No, no, I ask her. Well you can ask her. Okay. I asked her. And she said, it's like that. Normally, it's like that. 
In terms of sustainability, that's really what we're, that's what we're here to try to determine. If the current demand and the current harvesting practices are indeed sustainable. Yeah. Where's my translator? Yes. Uh, behind this house over here, they have a small garden of cartoons. Anjanette's job is all about getting a ground level view, okay. well, meeting with communities, seeing the trees with her own eyes, and learning about local harvesting practices from the harvesters themselves. So we all know that internationally, there's been a drop in demand for fairy on a resin. So I'm wondering if these trees were being tapped more in the past than they are now. So, so when the land's owned and the landowner is managing his land, yeah. they're, they're better managed yeah. than when the lands are rented yeah. out to multiple parties who don't necessarily feel connected to the land and yeah. manage it as well. Because and kept yeah. better. You say, why do you offer tap it? Yeah. I paid, I mean, 1,200 for hand. I see, I see. If I don't tap all trees from the, starting from stem all the way to the, to the, to the leaves, I won't make my how money. Do, how I can get my right. money back? Right. That's the problem. That makes sense. Yeah. Are, are we overriding the carrying capacity of these trees to give resins and stay healthy? And no one knows. A half a day drive from the frankincense forests, the specter of drought becomes evident. Three years without life-sustaining rains in the Horn of Africa have pushed people to their limits. I'm on my way to the mountains near the sea. I'm left with only a few goats and camels. All the others died. These are the only ones strong enough to come with me. This is only 80 goats and 10 camels. I'm one of the lucky ones. I didn't die of thirst, hunger or disease like many others. Most of the people in my village are poorer and weaker than us. They are in desperate need for water and food. With many of these rural communities turning to the frankincense trade to survive the intense drought, over-harvesting these ancient forests could spell disaster for the entire region. It's again eluding us where are the pockets of Carteri trees, healthy Carteri trees, the way we've seen the Feriana. And we're still looking. We're going to keep looking. Discovering a sustainable system is now more urgent than ever.